I am a little bit better. Yeah. You know, it's uh, I think it's it's almost been seven weeks since my motorcycle accident, if you can call it that. But um, the only thing that really bothers me is my left knee, okay. and it's actually got me out of work. <laughs> and you know like scrub a floor or you know do, do, do any manual labor I that can will probably last a long time yeah I'm sure it will long time uh, and I can carry stuff pretty well right now uh, so that's kind of my job that's what I've been reverted back to carrying stuff well I can see a big difference in you sitting down from two weeks ago yeah well I think the last time I was I was kind of like propped backwards <laughs> this way one foot up yeah um, so I think I feel better. I think, you know, we've had a little bit of rain the past couple days, but weather is nice. See? Summer is finally here. Yes. Or warmer weather is finally here. Now you live downtown. Have you had any of the cicadas? No. You haven't heard any of them? No. Okay. I took the dogs to a metro park, okay? And I couldn't hear myself think. Really? They were so many of them. And I mean, I, you know, I live in the country too, but I've never seen them fly and swarm either. They're just in the trees. You couldn't hear yourself. I kind of want to see them. See them? See them and hear them. I think you want to hear them. They don't, they're not, they're not a very attractive bug. I, um, a newscaster on channel 10 in the morning had some like... <laughs> So they didn't look pretty. No. Or tasty. I don't, no, I don't <laughs> think so. Not at all. All right. We're coming back with episode 11 of Closets and Cocktails. We've covered all different types of things. We had a special guest on yes. last time, Leslie McKee from Inspired Closets in Pittsburgh. And that was actually really fun for me because yeah. I didn't really have to do anything, right? <laughs> like I was sitting in the middle and you guys were going back and forth and back and forth. And it was Maryland to Oakland, right? And Dallas in 2001 to, you know, now here in Columbus in 2021. So it, it was a lot of fun for me just to kind of hear some of those different stories and, and tips and tricks. It was so uh, perfect that we met when we did how we did. Yeah. Because just our, you know, our stories just grew the same. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Every once in a while, I just think it's just crazy. Yeah, and how, how things work out, even when, you know, you don't, you don't know where that next foot is going, right? Yeah. You just keep flying Life through. is an adventure. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so speaking of adventures, this is a great, I think, beach cocktail, yes. summer cocktail. You want to introduce it? It is a vodka spritzer. And what all do we have in here? Well, cheers. There is simple syrup. Cranberry juice cocktail oh. and vodka. Okay. And then um, the the recipe said the secret was to marinate the fruit for at least thirty minutes. And then when you put that in the bottom, you put a lot of ice and you top it with a, a club soda or a flavored water. Yeah, and we. So ours is grapefruit. Grapefruit. Yeah, I think it's really good. Yeah, really good. I like it. It's really good. Yeah, I, and I know you weren't too hot on one from a couple <laughs> yeah, weeks ago. I still liked it. I enjoyed it myself, so. Uh, so let's get to the topic for tonight. And, you know, four weeks ago, or five weeks ago maybe, we left off talking about time management and task management. And I think it's important that we make a connection between, uh, you know, doing the simple thing now, right? We can think of plans, we can think of all these strategies, but sometimes you just need to take action with it. Mm -hmm. And we talked about that a couple minutes ago. And I, I want to have that be the guide for how we talk about time management now. And the reason is, is because I think a lot of people wake up in the morning and they have a plan for their day and then it, <laughs> it goes to hell in the <laughs> basket, right? And they just, they scrap the whole day. So simple things that we can do to help us better manage our time. So let's, let's just start with a story. When you wake up in the morning, when you think of how you budget your day, what are the first things that are important for you? Uh, the first things 
the first thing is a little planning time the day before okay. or the night before so that you figure out if you miss something that you need to put on the calendar. So the biggest thing is the big rocks. You know that story. You got to put the big rocks in first. Oh. No? Franklin, no. It's, I think it's a Franklin Covey. I hope I'm crediting the right person. Okay. You know, if you have a jar and you have big rocks and you have little rocks, medium, little, and pebbles, how do you most efficiently fill that jar? Okay. And the story is, in you know, he has the um, seminars and he has people do it. Mm. And you have to put the big rocks in first. Because if you put all the medium and little stuff, then your big rocks that are your, your important, your goals, don't fit. Don't fit. So yeah. you gotta put the big rocks in first and the things that you don't have any say in. Oh. Um, meetings that you have to attend, uh, those have two things have to go on your planner. Um, I think that's, I would have never thought about that. The things you don't have control over. Yeah, yeah, there are some. Yeah, yeah. no, absolutely. You're given times and you, you gotta put those on first. Um, I think one of the most simple things is, you, you said people get up and you have your whole day planned. The most simple thing is to only plan 50%. Okay. So if it does go to hell, you have, um, you have time for that. Yeah. You've allowed for that. Uh, one of the, another simple, simple thing is to have a buffer in between your activities. Give yourself time. You know, I, I think I said it before, but you can't end a meeting at 1.30 and start a meeting at 1.30. Right. So give yourself some white space in between. So that's where people have become a lot more productive over the past year, but that's also where they burnt themselves out. And when the idea is, is and this, could, this is true for closets or organizing or any appointment, right? Like if you physically need to be in a place, you can't do the 130 and 130, right? But when the, the location doesn't matter, we think that we can jam pack so much more into it. I guess my hand should go this way. We can jam pack so much more into that same time frame, but it still takes you 10 to 15 minutes to mentally prepare to get ready for the next meeting or debrief the other meeting. Both. Yeah. You gotta debrief, you gotta make your notes, and you gotta put those things away. Yeah. And then you need some mentally, mental clear space. So let me ask you a question then. Uh, and this is this kind of goes to uh, debriefing or, or that white space that you talked about. Do you like to do certain things on certain days? Do you need more? Um, I think that's smart. It's, it's like putting light things together. Yeah. And organizing time is just like organizing space. You want light things together. It's more... Um, Efficient. Yeah. Well, one of the things that I've tried to do with closets is, okay, Monday is my marketing day. Okay. Right? So it's uh, writing a blog post or Google My Business or checking on AdWords every couple of weeks uh, or planning out social media, right? Because you're, it's more creative. And so I, I need to be in that mindset for a longer period of time okay. to where those things can kind of tie together. Um, if I try and do a social media post and then QuickBooks, uh, no. yeah, like it's it's not going to go well, right? Yeah. So I'm I'm trying to find different times where I can move the essential tasks, but almost uh, um, elementary, right? Like I don't, I don't have to think a whole lot okay. about that stuff, yeah. right? I I don't have to be I I don't want to be creative with my accounting. No, you I do want not. to be creative with my social media. So I I, I find. If I can separate my days a little bit, I think, mm -hmm. that, I think that helps as well. Absolutely. Keep the light things together. You know, if you don't look at your email all, all day long. Yeah. You know, just pick a few times. People now, you know, they want answers yeah. right away. That you kind of have to train people. Uh, you know, I will get back to you in a, in a prompt fashion, but it's not going to be the next two minutes. Yeah. So I, I don't know if you've read Tim Ferriss yeah. before. Four hour work week? Yeah, four five, hour, five yeah. hour, four, four hour. Yeah, four. Five's too many. Yeah, who, would, who would want to work five? So, um, he, I mean, he talks about a couple of things. He uses the term batching. Batching. Right? So trying to batch things together or organize things together. Um, and it, it, it's applicable to so many different 
areas, so many different uh, organizations and, and things like that. Um, but it's also, you know, if you, and you say this as well, you have to schedule your priorities. Those are the big rocks. Those are the big right? rocks. Because you know during the day the phone's going to ring yeah. or the email's going to come in. And uh, going back to email, it was, I think it's, maybe he has an away message or something like that to where he says, I only check email at 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. or something like that. Yeah, and setting the expectations for when somebody's going to hear back from you. Because most of the time, the person sending the email already knows the answer. They just want to confirm with you or it's an answer that they could actually figure out themselves. Okay, hadn't thought about that. Yeah. This is something I use on my kids right now. Okay. I will not answer them if it's a question that they can figure out the answer to. That's it's, it's, good. It's sometimes it's as simple as like, Dad, do we have milk? <laughs> I mean, it's right there. Could you please just go look? So, yeah, sometimes it's like that. But, I mean, it, it can get more complicated. Okay. And, again, it takes time to build that sense of uh, empowerment and trust yes. in the other person to be able to figure out what the answer is. Yeah. Okay. So the short answer is yes, I like batching. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I talked for a long time just now. Um, so what are the big rocks in your day? When you say there's a meeting that you have to attend or there's something that is not under your control, what falls into that category? Okay. So the big rocks for me are, are goals. Okay. But the goals don't go on my calendar. It's planning that you break those goals down into tasks. Okay. So that you know, you know, I, I, what's the next step? Just the next step, and that's what you put on your calendar. So I think I think we need to flesh this out a little bit more. Okay. You put goal. Hold on. You you break your goals Stem. into different to tasks. 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 So give me a goal, or give everybody a goal that would. Uh, be applicable to a lot of people. Well, uh, I want to get fit. Okay. So you then, can't put that on your calendar. No, you can't. No, but you can put down, you know, a thirty-minute walk three times a week. Okay. That's like that's my first step. You can go. You can put on the grocery list. Uh, I, um, I'm gonna shop on the outside. You know, so uh, not the processed foods. Yeah, I'm gonna okay. hit all the, the produce. Okay. So it's um, what you're saying is the goal doesn't necessarily mean anything if the steps to get there aren't documented uh, and on your schedule. Yes. If they don't have a time, if they don't have a home, it's just like organizing stuff. If it doesn't, have a home, on your calendar, most times it won't get done. Okay. So put things on your calendar. I say if you if you've got something that you need to do and I'll take two minutes or less, just do it. Just do it. Like don't take the time to write it down on a list. Just do it and get it done. Um, but if it takes longer than that, then it needs a home on your list uh, on your calendar. So when you say home on your list or calendar, calendar, it could also just mean like a home up here too. So where you're actively thinking about it. You know, I just think. We have so much to remember and so much. I think you have to do a brain dump. Uh, like, just write down everything that you want to do. Um, and, you know, some things could just be far reaching or someday I wish I could. But that way you're not thinking about it. Exactly. So I just do a brain dump and then you look at that and you can kind of organize that as to, oh, this might be in the next week. This might be in the next six months. This is a just someday, maybe. Do you ever just brain dump just to get it out of your head oh, and then yes. throw the paper away? No. No. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. I keep the paper. Actually, you know, digital was good too. I'm keeping things on my phone. Well, I, ha I have an app. Okay. It's, hold that thought. I have an R Groceries app. Or, and there's all kinds of to-do lists, apps, yeah. and stuff that you can just brain dump there. So you can have different lists. Um, I need paper, or I need something in my hand. If I if I'm if I'm going like this, right, and it, if it's a note or a text or something like that, I find that the the um, muscular movement. I don't know. If there's a real word for it. 
um, helps. So, so I'm going through it. You know what I find, and I'll, also myself in, yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, uh, keep going. Uh, no. So what is that? Kinesthetic learning. Yeah. Adventure. There you go. You're, okay. You're, you're writing. Yeah. Um, I do it myself too because you have a, a general list, but then you're somewhere where the list isn't, so you write mm. a note, um. and then you write a note. And you write a note, and I I find that with a lot of my clients too. Like, and if we if I go there and we're they're overwhelmed with what they have to do, a lot of times their idea of what they have to do really isn't all they have to do. You know, you can delegate, you can just not yeah. do stuff because it's physically impossible to do everything they want to do in the time frame they have. But they have all these lists, and if you can bring them together into one where you, you don't have little post-its everywhere every once in a while you just have to bring everything together and have one list and that just calms your mind mm -hmm. you know like i'm not going to forget anything nothing's going to fall through the cracks because i've got this list yeah so that feels like a preliminary thing that you would do right make your list the night before or check your list when you wake up let's talk about at the end of the day when you journal everything that you did or maybe that's throughout the day probably throughout the day what do you feel about do you do that do you see a benefit to it well it you yes there's a benefit to at the end of the day just contemplating the day what you have left what you didn't get done because that can help you plan in the future you know, if you're always beating yourself up at the end of the day saying, gosh, I had this list, I had these things scheduled on my calendar, and I just, something happened, I didn't get to them, that can be uh, defeating. Mm -hmm. So okay. if you think about your day and, and be realistic and, and think what I got done, what I didn't get done, then you can push things off for the future, tomorrow, the next week. But you can also think, well, I won't schedule as much. Mm. And so that you set yourself up for getting things done and feeling better. I want to go back to, to keeping it simple. So this is another Tim Ferriss thing. There was a podcast that he did with Jim Collins, who was the uh, mm. good to great. Good to great. Yeah. And he actually has a system that is so simple and so easy. I haven't done it. I don't know why. But he does a... Negative two to positive two system, where at the end of the day he writes in his or he actually has an Excel spreadsheet. So he'll uh, say June third, two twenty twenty one. This day was a negative two for me, or this day was a two for me. And what he's trying to do is he's trying to and there's a journal that goes along with it, but he's trying to see where he's happiest and where he's so if he has a string of twos, he'll go back to the journal and say, oh, well, these are actually my most creative days. And I, I was able to do a lot of good thinking and good uh, strategic work. Where if he has a bunch of negative twos, maybe it's you know some life event happened that has been sapping energy, or maybe there's a problem at work that he has, that has to deal with. But it's, it's really just five numbers and trying to, to gauge swings based upon that. But he does say you can only do that the same day. Right. You can only write the number the same day. You can't recreate. No. Because you forget. You forget. Too much. You forget. Now, if 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 a client is doesn't get everything done and she's got this huge list, a lot of times for the first two weeks I'll just say write things down. Yeah. Like, you know, figure out how you are spending your time because a lot of times just writing it down you can see a lot of time wasters mm. where. You know, if you, I always, like one client in particular, she was uh, volunteering for all these things. I'm like, well, but she wasn't getting things done that were important. Um, you know, spending time with her husband. Um, and I'm like, every time you say yes yeah. to something, you're saying no to something else. Yeah. So you've got to be uh, strong and disciplined as to what you say yes to. That's a whole other topic, though. I don't think we have enough time okay. for that tonight. Okay. But you're you're absolutely right. Yeah. It's hard though. It's hard. It to is hard. It, you know, the it, first thing you do. Yeah. Oh. That's 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 really interesting. Let me think about it. Okay. 
I want to work on that. Yeah, so that you don't say yes right away. Because it's, it's easier just to say yes, yeah. but then you have to deal with the, all the work that goes yeah. with it. So if you just say, because I'm not saying you should say no to everything, but you should make a good um, conscious decision. Mm -hmm. So if you just say, let me think about that for a couple of days and I'll get back to you, then you have time to weigh the pluses and minuses, what you're saying yes to, what you have to say no to. Okay, so you've been doing this for a while. Yeah. Probably your whole life. Probably my whole life. Probably your whole life. So if if you're going to give advice to a kid going to college, or if you're going to give advice to somebody getting out of college that's going to be completely on their own, right, about managing time, what are the, the top two things that you say, hey, listen, just focus on this and focus on this? Life lessons from Birdie Brown. Oh, my goodness. So much pressure. Um, <laughs> Just make good decisions. Realizing saying yes is making a decision, and it's so making good decisions about how you want to spend your time. Okay. And it's so hard, but balance. Um, schedule the, the fun as well as the work and the going towards goals. Um, and and for everybody, if you go in with a plan of being organized, you're gonna save so much time and energy. Mm -hmm. So like a college student, organize and, we're going off two now, it's just a strain. Um, but staying organized and staying um, focused on what you wanna get done, your goals. So let's talk about the scheduling fun to wrap up the entire conversation. I like it. Because people don't do it. <laughs> so, so go back to the uh, making good decisions. Okay? I actually, that, that doesn't mean a whole lot. I don't think. Making good decisions. Yes. When you, make, ju when you just say make good decisions. So I, I, want, I want to qualify my statement. I think what we need to go back to is we need to use our time intentionally to think about what we want. Make deliberate decisions. Yeah, because I, you know, what happens, and this is true with Snickers bars or homework or whatever it is, right? If you don't put those guardrails for yourself up, when that Snicker bar comes, you're going to get the Snickers bar, right? For the college kid, if you don't have the, the guardrails of I need to get my studying done between three and six then something's going to happen that's going to take you away from that. And if you don't have the decision already made, mm -hmm. then when you get in the middle of it, when you get into the motion of it, it's so hard, so to, hard. To, to do that. Um, so, I mean, you can call that discipline or you could call that uh, a lot of different things, but it's, you know, structured thing, but it's, I think it's really important to have those guardrails set up ahead of time. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Uh, let's talk about fun. I, I'm not, I'm not great at this. Uh, because, I, you know, w I could let work get into almost every part of my day. And I don't feel that I'm super attached to email, but I do feel the need to be responsive to mm -hmm. other people. Mm -hmm. So when you think of scheduling fun, what does that mean for you at this point in time? And what could it mean for me with two teenagers and a nine-year-old at home? It, it could mean... I mean, it, it's going to be different for everybody. For you, it right. might be date night. Oh, hear that, April? <laughs> she said that we could drop off all three kids here and just go out. I, I didn't really say that. That's what I But heard. you could. Give me some notice. <laughs> Give me some notice. Uh, for me, it, I'm really good at doing the social things with other people. And during that time, you know, somebody asks us to go to dinner or play cards. There's a get together around the pool. I'm great putting that on the calendar and, and keeping it. But I'm not very good at doing things for myself. Yeah. So uh, taking a walk, I mean, that's, taking a walk hits two. It gets me outside, I enjoy it, but it also gives me some exercise too. Okay. Is that fun? I mean, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I'm with you. I, I like work, so working yeah. can be fun, but you have to 
It is not fun for the people around you. I, as we got called oh. out on Sunday <laughs> or Monday. So, yeah, um, that was bound to happen. So anyway, when now add, add kids to the mix, right? You said date night, but w what happens when you have five different schedules? It's tough. I I I kind of think it's managing expectations, right? Like you're going to get your 30 minutes of video game time, right? That's going to be a daily fun thing for you, but I can't go rollerblading every day, or I can't go bowling every day, or you know, you know something like that. So I, th I almost think it's there's an emotional component to it as well when you schedule fun. Yeah, but if you schedule it, it you know, and it's a priority, then you schedule out and you right. block that time and you keep that appointment. Yeah. Then then you can't. It's not every day. But there's also something to look forward to. There's little things, and then there's bigger things to look forward yeah. to. Yeah, I like the, the big rocks and the little rocks. See, she she did a callback there. Okay, um, anything that else that you want to add in to wrap up time and, and task management? It. I tell my clients, uh, I'm an organized person. I practice what I preach. Time management is tough. Um, I can teach it. But I myself, I, I have trouble. So it's it's hard. Don't beat yourself up, mm -hmm. but be realistic about what you want to get done. If you have a lot of I should, I should, I should, get those off your plate. Yeah. Just do the things you have to and the things you want to and ditch those shoulds. Ditch the shoulds. I like it. Okay. So we're gonna come back again in two weeks. Uh, we're going to hit a new and different topic. Maybe we'll open this up to the crowd. Yeah, see what they want. See what they want. And you, in, in the vein of planning out into the future, you already have the next drink of the day figured out. Well, I have a stash of them, but yes, okay. I think we're going to have a Paloma. I don't even I've know never what had means. one. Yeah. So but I have a recipe. So check back. So, so I have a closet and cocktail place. I see a good recipe, I throw it in there. There and you go. This was a winner. It was. I really enjoyed it. All right. Thank so you, Bernie. You'll, you'll post the recipe. I will. Okay. Cheers. Thanks for watching.